The objective of this video is to explore the well-to-product pane, also called the WTP pane, which is where users can review well-to-product or well-to-pump pathways and their results. We'll specifically look at the products menu, the pathway display frame, and the results section. Just to review the layout of the WTP pane, we can see in the upper left is the products menu. In the lower left, we can see energy consumption and emissions results. And at the right of the pane, we see the pathway display frame. Looking first at the products menu, we see that products are listed alphabetically and we can scroll through the menu to find a product, or we can just type in a name in the search menu. The products menu is arranged in a hierarchy in which the highest level is a category of products, and within a category are mixes, and within a mix are products. Categories group products that are derived from a similar feedstock source, and some categories, like gasoline, have subcategories for like products because they're so uh, large. Clicking on a category might display a single product or a list of products, a mix or a list of mixes, or some combination of products and mixes. A mix is a user-defined combination of pathways used to make a particular product, and clicking on a mix displays a pie chart showing the sources and their percent contribution to the overall mix that comprises a product. If we open a list of mixes, we see a list of products, and then if we click on a product, we see that pathway used to create that product. Turning now to look at the pathway display frame, we see that the pathway is displayed as a sequence of processes, and each process contains inputs and outputs listed within it, and the processes are connected by arrows. The color of each process indicates what type of process it is. A yellow process is a pathway that's related to the pathway we're viewing that might occur upstream of the pathway. Peach indicates a pathway mix. Blue indicates a stationary process, which has one or more inputs that are transformed into one or more outputs, resulting in energy consumption and emissions. And then pink represents transportation processes, in which the input doesn't change and instead energy consumption and emissions result from transportation of a product. If we click on a process, we see that a separate window opens where that process or pathway or mix can be edited. An output is always listed at the end of the pathway at the right of the screen. If we jump to the pathway for ethanol production from corn, we see multiple outputs listed at the right of the diagram, which sometimes may be the case. If we right-click on an output, we can see a pathway or process where the output is used. There can be parallel processes for a particular stage in the pathway. For instance, in this pathway, there are both dry mill and wet mill processes 
for the fermentation stage. And the percent contribution from each process is shown in the next process where the two ethanol streams are combined into one national average. And finally, I'll just point out that there's a toolbox at the top of the window which contains a panning tool and zooming tools, which might be helpful when you are reviewing a pathway. When a pathway is selected in the products menu, the results displayed in the results section are well to product results for the entire pathway. Likewise, when a mix is selected, the results we see are well-to-product results for all products in the mix. These results include energy consumption and emissions resulting from all processes in the pathway as well as upstream processes for inputs in the pathway. If we click on a process on the pathway diagram, we can see that the results change. Now the displayed results include upstream energy and emissions and energy and emissions resulting from the pathway up to and including that process that we selected. The difference here is that results exclude impacts from processes downstream of the process that is selected or processes to the right in the diagram of the process that is selected. The results are not for this single process, though results for a single process can be calculated, and we can do this by selecting the process, copying results by right-clicking on the results and selecting Copy All Values, then pasting the results into an Excel spreadsheet, And then we can repeat these steps, but with the next process upstream or to the left. We then subtract results in the second column from those in the first. And then we'll have results for a single process that we might be interested in in this particular pathway. Now looking at results, we see that they're in terms of emissions or energy per some functional unit of an output, as we see here. It's always a good idea to verify that you're viewing the correct results for the output that you want. In this case, the functional unit is 1 million BTUs of pet coke produced. We can click on the functional unit to change the unit group, the unit, and also the amount. We'll stick with the default here, and let's look at an example of a result. If we look under emissions, we can look at carbon dioxide, and we see that 10.139 kilograms of CO2 is emitted per 1 million BTUs of pet coke produced. Let's also look under resources, and we can see here that 108,427 BTUs of natural gas are expended in the production of 1 million BTUs of pet coke. By this point, you should be familiar with the basic functions of the WTP pane, and practicing with the model will help you become more comfortable with reviewing pathways and their results. So good luck, and thanks for watching.